Welcome to the latest edition of the Omni Talk Spotlight Series. We're excited because we are again live from Las Vegas. And we're excited to discuss the latest in technologies and the companies and the people that we believe are shaping the evolution of retail. And today we are absolutely thrilled because we are here at Planet 13 in the store live. And we are with Bob Grosbeck, the CEO of Planet 13. So Bob, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. So we just got a tour of the show, or I'm sorry, of the store, and it's exciting to sit down here with you. So I think for our audience and our listeners, tell us about it. Like, how did this whole thing come about? I mean, it's the world's largest cannabis store out in the marketplace. So how did you ever come up with that idea? Well, I, I wish I could take full credit for it. I'm, I'm actually co-CEO. Co-CEO, sorry. Yeah, my, my uh, partner and founder, uh, Larry Scheffler. Um, and Chris Wren, who's also one of our founders, okay. and our head of uh, operations, VP of operations. Um, the three of us really, this is a combination of our collective thoughts and dreams and visions. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a crazy ride. As I mentioned to you on the tour, as we could liken it to dog years because right. time is moving so quickly. But we, you know, we opened this store in November of last year and it uh, it's a culmination of about two years of incredible work on behalf of our whole team mm -hmm. to really build something unique and special in the cannabis space mm -hmm. and to do it at a Las Vegas level. Mm -hmm. And we tell people all the time, our goal was to out Vegas, Vegas. Okay. And, um, you know, we thought if, if we're going to, you know, if we're going to participate in the cannabis uh, space and particularly at the retail level, we wanted to do something that was completely different, something over the top and something that would, draw people to the facility because they wanted to experience all the amenities that we mm -hmm. offer. Mm -hmm. So that, that's really the impetus behind this whole thing. Yeah, you said something really interesting to us on the tour. I think you said you think of this not as a store, but you think of it as a, a cannabis entertainment concept. It's exactly what it is. What, what does that mean? <laughs> Unpackage that for the listeners. Sure. You know, this is our second retail store. Okay. We opened our original store in 2016. And as I'd mentioned to you on the tour, it was a beautiful facility. We really liked it. It was over the top for its time, but it was too small. And it wasn't really Vegas in the sense that you could accommodate, you know, uh, large numbers of people coming in to, you know, to recreate and have a good time here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's really what it was all about. It's like, how do we take this to the next level? And how big was that? Bob. Um, the total square footage of that facility is about 5,000 feet, of which about 2,300 square feet was devoted to retail floor space. Okay. To put that in perspective, our current facility that we're in tonight, the, the retail side of it alone is about 16,200 square feet. The total facility right now is about 40,000 square feet Jeez. with another 20,000 square feet under construction. Okay. So we have 112,000 square feet to build into. And uh, our goal is to build through as quickly as possible and provide amenities that bring bring the tourist customer and locals, for that matter, into the facility that want to spend time here. Mm -hmm. This is about bringing you into a facility and actually enjoy being here and want to stay here mm -hmm. when we want you to stay here. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea here. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't about, you know, keep the car running, pop in, grab an eighth pre-roll, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, get back in the car and you're gone. Yeah. So. You said something, Bob. You said that your your mission here is great service, great facilities, and great products. Right. Tell us how you think about the products that are on the shelves and on display here, and then the product of the entire store, uh, Planet 13, as, mm -hmm. as a product. Well, I think the building speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. It's so over the top, so unique, and built to really high standard that we really think we've set the bar mm -hmm. for, for a high-end retail experience in cannabis. But the product side of it is huge. You know, as I mentioned before, um, two of our product lines that, that we're very proud of, our medicine uh, product lines and now our trendy lines. Um, again, the idea was to build something that, you know, the customer comes to expect great quality. You know, they know that it's, it's an excellent product and it's consistent. Every time you buy a trendy pen, or a medicine pen or concentrate, mm -hmm. you know you're going to get the same high quality. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And then we top that off, of course, with great customer service. 
you know, you can't have a great experience without great customer uh-huh. uh, interaction. And you know, our bud trender, our bud tenders, and our personnel are constantly trained to provide a high level of service uh-huh. and to to intimately know the products that they're selling. Um, we have full time trainer on staff. Um, we have a entire room set aside in the building to do training. We bring in our outside vendors, they train our, our employees, um, and that's critically important because we have a lot of SKUs down there. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, customers need to really understand what the opportunities are for them. Mm-hmm. And there's a large product array for them to choose from, and it's important that we convey that, that to them correctly. Well, and that comes across right in the experience, right? So like the first, you enter through the quote unquote, whatever you want to call it, turnstiles, and the first person you see is whom? A host. A host. Yeah, a host and, will greet you immediately. And again, some customers know exactly what they want, so they'll be directed to the express lines. Um, and others want to shop at their leisure, and we encourage you to spend as much time as you want mm-hmm. on the floor. And, um, and if that's what you want to do, then you can do that, mm-hmm. and then we'll put you into the queue. And mm-hmm. then when you're ready to meet with a bud tender, then mm-hmm. they'll take you through the transaction. And explain the visuals for the audience, too, in terms of what they would see. So they talk to this host, and, and how's the product arranged? What does it look like? Well, as you see, we've got, you know, at any given time, we can have a, well over 100 SKUs of different okay. products. Each vendor typically will package their product, um, you know, according to their specs, mm-hmm. and they put it in our cases. Mm-hmm. Everything, of course, is approved by us and meets our design criteria. Okay. We want to showcase everything that's in the store. And so the vendors actually do a pretty good job. You know, they're obviously, you know, they're acutely aware of the fact that, you know, a, a strong visual presence is going to draw customers to the cases. Um, again, at the end of the day, you got to have great products, but it's all about, you know, catching your eye. Mm-hmm. And as you see, every product down there, every case is designed differently. I mean, you even, you even have a sensory bar, right? And we so do. What, and how is that designed within that sales floor experience? Well, that's basically in the center of the facility. Okay. And it, it's just that. It's a sensory bar because... Lots of customers will come in, for instance, as we mentioned before, on our beer lines, one of, you know, one of our vendors actually put uh, uh, kegs into the floor, into, okay. the, into the room, because a customer will come in and you'll tell them about the beer and, you know, they can buy it infused, but, you know, they want to taste it. They want to sample it. Well, we can't give them a sample of an infused product, but we can certainly provide them with an uninfused beer. They can t- taste that. And if they like it, well, then, of course, they can buy the product infused. And... Uh, Same with the edibles and same with flour. You know, uh, there's still a large number of customers that want to look at the flour and want to smell it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've got, for lack of a better term, almost like a fine uh, martini glass Mm -hmm. that, you know, they can, the bud tender will pull out of the case for Mm -hmm. them and they can cleanse their palate with coffee Mm -hmm. grounds and move on to the next. Almost like a wine tasting. Almost. Yeah, very much. And, uh, and, and there are connoisseurs of cannabis, just like there are in wine. Believe me, the, there's some folks that have an incredible amount really? of expertise. They can tell you the terpene profile just by smelling it, and it's amazing. That's amazing. So, do they have the same routines with the wine glass? Oh, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, there are routines. <laughs> do they really? Yeah, and it's interesting just to watch, <laughs> and uh, it, it fascinates me. But uh, we want them to have that experience. Again, that's what it's all about. You know, enjoy your shopping experience and, um, you know, make sure you're, you're buying something that you want, something that you know and you're mm-hmm. comfortable with. Mm-hmm. When you guys were, were building out the space, what kind of industries were you benchmarking against and how were you thinking about how you were going to create this experience? Well, we're fortunate in Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world. Sure. And we've got some of the most unique uh, properties anywhere on the planet. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, looking at gaming and, you know, looking at some of these fabulous facilities built, they've built up and down Las Vegas Boulevard, it was easy for us to kind of get a sense of, you know, we want to, we want to do something like that, mm-hmm. obviously at a smaller scale, mm-hmm. but that same level, you know, uh, you know, that same experience, you know, that people come in and they go, wow, I've mm-hmm. never seen anything like this, mm-hmm. particularly in the cannabis. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, nobody's ever built 20 foot balls out in the front with steam and lights. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Who builds lotus flowers on the top of the roof? Mm-hmm. And who has interactive art walls mm-hmm. outside? Well, no one. And that was the whole idea. Let's just do something completely over the top yeah. and different. That's, we got to hit on that because so for so in terms of what we write about a lot, we write about you know we write about the the, the legacy retail industry and how fast innovation is moving. And when we were when we were talking before this, we you basically got into this business. What did you say, two thousand fourteen? Correct. 
So I just want to make sure people understand this who are listening. So in 2014, you got in this business with roughly a 5,000 square foot store. Now we're sitting in, inside a building that's 120,000 square feet. 112. 112. Sorry. Thank you. 112,000 square feet. R- round it up. Yep. I like it. I like it. I like where you're going, Chris. That's how and, we think. And, and right now there's, in, and check my, check my numbers on this too, but the 40,000 square feet roughly that you've got devoted to the operation. So right. eight times the size. With plans for the future. Right. And what I find so, so quite frankly, goddamn inspiring about that is in the span of five years, you guys have gone after something completely new in an industry where quite honestly, there's so many regulations right. that you probably have to think about that could probably beat a lot of people back. But yet you're moving the pace of innovation so fast, almost as, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. So. Right. So how do you think, and the retail industry should stop and look at that in terms of how you're thinking about what you're doing and just, you know, how, quite frankly, how bold you're being with what you're trying to do. So how do you think about that in terms of, you know, finding ways to innovate and create and, and, and where it is now, but also taking it further down the road into the future? Well, I think innovation is the key in any retail experience. Um, it's, it's, Particularly in Vegas, it's critically important. Mm-hmm. You know, um, anybody can build a widget. Mm-hmm. It's you build a widget that people want to come and see or want to touch, want yeah. to feel, want to be part of. Yeah, that's what this is all about. Um, Larry and I decided early on when we decided to get into the business that if we were going to do this, we're going to do it all the way. Mm-hmm. Um, we were going to actually, you know, we were going to make the commitment financial, financially, and of course, you know, the time to really create an experience. Mm-hmm. And we looked at many dispensaries mm-hmm. before we opened our original facility, mm-hmm. uh, the medicine location, mm-hmm. and we were underwhelmed mm-hmm. and actually discouraged. Mm-hmm. But we also saw it as an opportunity because we knew that, you know, as consumers, uh, you know, just people that go to stores and buy products, we know what it feels like to have a good experience when mm-hmm. we shop. Mm-hmm. Well, why not apply those principles to the cannabis space? Mm-hmm. I mean, why not make it an attractive environment where people want to go to? Yeah. Right. You don't want to come into a facility and feel unsafe yeah. or it feels dingy, dark. Um, you know, it's just not attractive. We thought, you know what? Let's just change. Let's, let's look to a paradigm shift. Let's just mm-hmm. change the entire focus mm-hmm. on how we should sell this concept to the public. Mm-hmm. And this is it. This is the result. And so what happens next? So as, you, as we go back to the very initial stages of how we started this conversation, you know, a cannabis entertainment concept, mm-hmm. what's, uh, in terms of what you can share, what, what's coming next? So as it evolves and you put that mindset and that lens on it, where are you taking this? Well, I've got to be careful in what I say. Um, all I can say is stay tuned okay. in the short term because okay. there's some very exciting things on the horizon that we hope to announce to the market here soon. And again, they tie in well to this whole concept of a cannabis entertainment complex. It's about the experience. And as I said, the production facility being behind glass, big portion of where customers can actually watch products being manufactured in -hmm. in front of them. And they can watch the automation and the robotics and actually understand what is being made at that time and learn about it, Mm -hmm. you know, through the interactive kiosks that'll be on the floor. Mm -hmm. Again, the whole idea is we want the customer just to be overwhelmed with the experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and and another philosophy that we live by very strongly here is all we need to do is get you into the store once. Mm -hmm. It was the same at our medicine store as Mm -hmm. it is here. Mm -hmm. We just need to get you there once Mm -hmm. because we know after that first visit, you're going to be a regular customer. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time you're back in Vegas, you're going to come to the store. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that to us is success. Mm-hmm. You know, when people continually come back time and time again and mm-hmm. share those experiences and, mm-hmm. and they tell their friends. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what's wonderful. Every day I come into work, I look at that ball out front and I see all the people out there taking the selfies and, right. and blasting <laughs> everything out to their right. friends. To me, that's huge. Yeah. I just, you know, and it's, it brings a great deal of satisfaction. Well, and you want people to spend time here too, right? Like right. food is food is also an important part of this experience, Absolutely. right? As you're designing it. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're very fortunate that, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we're currently building out our, um, our coffee shop and okay. our bistro pizzeria. And uh, we uh, purely by luck uh, ran into 
uh, a gentleman in Kingman, Arizona. Okay. Got to know him, and he owns, he's the proprietor of uh, Rickety Cricket. And uh, in Kingman, Arizona, he's got shops, three shops in, uh, in Arizona. And just a fabulous guy, but more importantly, just a fabulous operator. Um, he's a world-class uh, pizza guy. Um, I mean, world-class. Oh. And just a uh, just a fantastic operator, and you know, we discovered that you know there are throngs of people from Vegas that migrate up to a store in Kingman just for the trip to experience the food and really the craft brewery that he has there. And you know, when we met him, it's like you know what, we need to build a relationship, and uh, so we're so excited to have him part of that. And the facility itself will be over the top. It'll be. It'll be very similar to what you see over here. Just um, there's nothing like it in in the restaurant business that we're aware of. Again, it's our goal to out Vegas, Vegas, akin to what you'd expect in Vegas. Right. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and you're creating another draw, like you were mentioning, for those people that are maybe cannabis curious, as you right. said, or you know just want to come and be with their friends in the space, but might not be interested in sampling the product. You're, right. you're again, focusing on this total experience for, for both um, cannabis users and non-cannabis users, and you're putting in a high quality pizza place. So you're now right. a food destination and you're a, an, an entertainment mm. destination right. and a retailer. I, I think you're just, what you're doing and, and your, what your plans um, are for the future are really world class in in the retail industry so where did the retail bug come from bob yeah like where does that come from in the history uh, well i don't know if it's so much the retail bug it's just the business bug the I business just love, bug. okay larry and i've been together for well over 20 years together now in real estate and other adventures and mm-hmm. we're you know we're great friends mm-hmm. and he's been a great business partner mm-hmm. and he's truly a visionary too in his own right he's he he loves gadgets okay. and a lot of what you see here in the facility on the floor is really his vision yeah. on how things should come together. I'm more the ops guy, I'm more the bottom line guy. Mm-hmm. We run everything by each other. We're, we're you know and you know with the input from David and his team, we're very very fortunate that we've just got an excellent group. But you know, I was actually, I worked in the retail environment when I was in college. You did. I, I worked, it had to come somewhere. I think yeah, you'd be a little hungry. I actually too. worked in merchandising and okay. with, uh, I was with Macy's and okay. uh, Amfac Corporation, sure. Liberty okay. House. I don't know yeah. if you know with those guys. Sure. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that. It was a great experience. Had a lot of fun with it, um, but kind of went a different direction in yeah. my career. But when we decided to do this, you know, it was, it was really neat because it was something that we, we could build from ground up. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, we, I just, for us, it was, I don't know how many tens of thousands of hours putting it together, but for, for us, it was, it, it was just incredibly enjoyable right. to do it. You know, it's creative. I mean, at this level, you know, almost uh, exercising that artistic side of your brand. Yeah. I think yeah. very humble. Something, there's something somewhere because having walked through the space, seeing it in real life, talking yeah. to you about mm-hmm. the decisions you guys are making together, there's, right. there's an intuitive sense that you guys have in the creation of this space that's interesting so it's, it was curious to hear that there, there is some retail in the background well i appreciate that we're also very fortunate though that we brought in some top-notch designers right people that really again because we can see the vision but you know we're not artists and, right you know we're not contractors so we're very very lucky that you know we've got a core group of people that we work with that um we all get along we all you know share the same vision and goals and um, so from that standpoint, we're, we're very pleased, but we're never satisfied, right? We're constantly looking to build a better widget and, um, and that's what we're doing here. You know, things continue to evolve and, um, you come back to this facility a year from now, it's going to be completely different than what you see today. And then, you know, our goal of course is now, as I mentioned to you earlier, our goal is to take the planet brand and start putting that in other parts of the country. Other parts of the country. Yeah. 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 That's really incredible. Um, as we kind of wrap up the conversation, Bob, would you have any advice that you would give to um, our retail-specific audience um, as they're thinking about um, getting into cannabis-related retail um, and just experiential retail? Well, I, obviously, you have to be committed and you have to love what you're doing because 
Um, if you're looking to work a 40 hour work week in the cannabis space, you're not going to go very far. <laughs> As a testament to you, as we're, we're here late night. Yeah, yeah late night on a, this on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do it. But it, it it takes a lot of capital. That's one thing. Incredibly expensive. The other thing is, I would I would caution your your viewers, uh, your audience, um, make sure you get really good legal and financial okay um, advice. Mm -hmm. uh, accountants and lawyers are critical to your success. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, get really sharp people that share your vision, marketing people, for instance, mm -hmm. that, that see where you want to go can help you know, implement that. Um, for us, it's a labor of love, but it's challenging. Mm -hmm. um, this, is a, this is the most highly regulated business I've ever worked in. And again, I mentioned to you, I come out of the salt waste industry, which right. is highly right. regulated yeah, in its own right. right. Highly regulated, but nothing like this. No. And the rules here are different in every jurisdiction, and sometimes they're different within jurisdictions. You got city rules, county rules, state rules, and they often uh, are in conflict. And of course, it is still a federal one, narcotic in the United States, so it's federally illegal. And that alone creates massive challenges, yeah. banking, tax implications. Um, so if you're if you're bold enough to get in, you want to make the jump. You just need to be aware of it, mm -hmm. and um, it's an exciting industry. It's new. I mean, how many times in your lifetime do you get a chance to get into a business that was illegal that is now coming from the underground yeah. into a traditional business model? It doesn't happen. I can think of maybe alcohol and prohibition. Yeah. Prohibition, right. yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, they're I can't just. can't think of another one, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. let's think gaming, yeah. Yeah. Nevada. Yeah, gaming's a good one. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Like you know, sports gaming betting. Gaming was illegal. Sports betting now. And yeah, things like but that. prior to, I think, 1931 in Nevada, gambling was illegal. Yeah. And, you know, look at what you see up and down the Las Vegas yeah. Boulevard now. Yeah. Right. So, you know, those gaming pioneers, those are names that we hear all the time here. Right. You know, they're on buildings and casinos now. Right. Um, but imagine how they sat ar around and thought, you know what, they're going to legalize this. Yeah. How do we get involved? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so it, it's challenging, but it's incredibly exciting. You know, I am. Um, again, I. I, I, I overuse it, but I, I equate this to dog years. Things move so quickly. Yeah. It's like, you know, oh, that was, that was two years ago. It feels like it was 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. It's, um, I just can't believe the journey, just even in this conversation, just in a five-year period of time. No. Like in everything we just discussed and the ground we just covered, that's right. amazing. Dog years is the perfect analogy for that. So. Well, and, and like I said, we're an integrated company, so this is just one component. You know, our production facility, right. our cultivation facilities. Right. We own a facility 120 miles north of Vegas. We have 80 acres of property. We bought an old brothel. Okay. We converted that to a production facility okay. in a small grove. And uh, to our knowledge, it's probably the largest hard zoned piece of dirt in the United States huh. devoted to um, a cannabis. To cannabis. And municipal water out in the middle of the desert and a giant runway to land a 727 jet really? right next door to us. Okay. Wow. It's fabulous. Yeah. And um, it's, you know, that's a wonderful asset in our portfolio. We were poised to build 150,000 square feet of greenhouse production up there a year ago. We started seeing a lot of supply hitting the market here. We thought, you know what, let's pull it back a bit. We could probably do a better job at getting, you know, reduced pricing as more and more supply comes into the market, which is, is born out to be the case. Mm -hmm. And but we we see that you know it's a longer term play for us, mm -hmm. particularly as um, marijuana falls off of Schedule One. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that that's going to be a fabulous facility for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. so. Great, great. Well, this has been great. We've got we've got one more exciting thing to do with you. <laughs> All right. uh, I am thrilled to do this. It, uh, it's awesome that you're a great supporter for agreeing to do this too. So, uh, we, as you, as we told you, and as the audience knows, we frequently play the game. How millennial are you? And the idea is not to judge how, you know, old or young one is, but really to just have a fun time to try to understand how curious of mind someone is with everything that's going on. So we have a standard set of questions that we ask all of our guests and always does the honors. And so, Anne, take it away. All right. So the first question is when you are, we'll say at the grocery store, you're going to go check out, are you doing Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, some sort of mobile payment, or do you pull out your credit card or cash? My credit card or cash. Credit, credit card, card or cash. cash. Okay. Uh, second. Strike one. Strike. Strike. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have those on your phone? I think that would yeah. be the question. 
No, I don't use Apple Pay. Not, not at all. Not no. at all. Okay. Okay. I'm old school. Oh. It'll change your life. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> ever. It's my number one favorite invention. Oh, but I do get Amazon Prime. And I tell uh, there you go. All right. All right. All right. We'll give you half a point. We'll give you half a point. Okay. All right. Um, okay. The next question is um, when you are um, hungry, thirsty, want coffee, how many times this last week have you used an app to order food or a beverage? Again, can I include Amazon Prime? Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, probably, yeah. I order from Amazon a lot. Okay. Yeah. Do you so, go to Starbucks? No, I'm not a big Starbucks guy. I'm not a big guy, coffee guy? Okay. But, no, I'm a big coffee guy. Oh, big coffee guy. Not a, guy, not Starbucks, a Starbucks, Starbucks guy. guy. Okay. But, um, no, I probably, I haven't used an app to buy other than Amazon. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Right, last cool. question. Okay. If you could only use one social app... What would it be? I can't wait to hear the answer. And to this why? One. He's smiling already. This is great. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. Um, that's why I've got David sitting here. Um, <laughs> one social app. Um, I'd have to say. Well, but I don't use it anymore. I would say for me, back in the day, LinkedIn was probably okay. Something. Um, I even did Facebook way back in the okay. day, but okay. I've kind of checked out on all that. So. Well, believe it or not, in the last like two, three days, I think we've probably done about you know six or so interviews, and that LinkedIn has been literally the answer in every yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah, LinkedIn seemed to be uh, you know pretty cool. So are you still on it? You said you you don't use it as much. No, I don't use it now. Unfortunately, as the CEO of this company, a co-CEO, um, I, I I really had to transition out of the social media side right. of it. I just absolutely keeps get you bombarded. too busy almost yeah. and bombarded. Yeah, and, yeah. and and again, as a public company, it's. Kind of David and his department now, they right. kind of manage and handle all that. Right. So. Makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Makes and I'm sense. not that millennial as you've obviously figured out, but <laughs> but uh, I try hey, to be. I aspire a, to be. A, hey, you're more millennial than some, yeah. my friend. Right. right. More, more, more millennial than some. So. I mean, I love my Apple. I, I use all Apple products. So I'm, uh, hey, yeah. there you go. Honorary there you go. millennial. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, awesome. Awesome. So, hey, thanks again. Thank you so much for this. Yes. This was a oh, fantastic interview. We really enjoyed it. We were look, really looking forward to this for the past week, quite frankly. And so, again, for everyone listening, we have Planet 13's co-CEO, Bob Grossbeck. Uh, we're live at the store. For everyone listening, as always, be careful out there.